Good evening and welcome to your next video in chapter 14. Today we are going to look at another theory for distinguishing between asses and bases. The theory we're going to look at this evening is the Bronsted-Lowry theory of acids and bases. Bronsted was a Danish chemist who worked along Lowry, which was or who was an English chemist. And they said that an acid could be anything as long as it donated a proton. Well, a proton we know is a positive charge, and what has a positive charge? Well, hydrogen ion is a single positive charge, so hydrogen ion is basically considered a proton. So a proton donor is something that's going to donate a hydrogen. A base, then, is anything that accepts that proton. So it is the proton acceptor. So let's look at some examples. If we have HCl and we react it with NH3, we get NH4 plus and Cl minus. So we have to look at the equation and figure out what donated a hydrogen and what accepted a hydrogen. Well, in this case, if we see our products, we have an extra H on the NH3, so that means H must have donated to NH3. That means HCl is my acid and NH3 is my base. Looking at a different example, neither of these jump out at us as an acid or a base like in the Arrhenius theory. So we look again at what accepted and what donated. In this case, it is water that donated its hydrogen over to NH3. So in this case, water is considered the acid where NH3 is considered the base. Now looking at their acid-base reactions, remember in Arrhenius reactions we had the acid plus the base gave us a salt and water. Well in Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reactions, as the protons are transferred or the hydrogen is transferred from one reactant to the other. So we're not really getting a whole salt and water thing going on. We have two different compounds uh, that are now different ions because it has transferred an H. So one has a positive and one has a negative charge. So there are different types of acids. We could have monoprotic acids, which can only donate one proton per molecule. For example, HCl, HNO3, HClO4, each of them only has one hydrogen at the beginning of the compound. Or we can have polyprotic acids. These can donate more than one proton per molecule. So when they are added uh, to a solution, it's going to break down more hydrogens or have more protons to donate. So for example, H3PO4 or H2SO4. So how do these uh, polyprotic acids ionize? If it's just a monoprotic acid, basically you just transfer the H and you're done. But what if you have more than one H? Does it just transfer and done? Well, kind of, but not completely. We're going to keep going and we're going to keep transferring until we are done with transferring all of the hydrogens out of the acid. So for example, we have H2SO4, add it to water, and one of our hydrogens is transferred to H2O, making H3O+, plus. we remember that as hydronium, but we still have this left over, which means I still have a hydrogen that is left to come off of this acid. So this goes through then another ionization. So this is sitting around in water because we're still in water. As it, if it's sitting around in water, it also has an H that it can transfer over and we get another 
hydronium. And then we have SO4 left, and you can see there are no more H's, so this would be done. So diprotic, there's two steps to ionize it. Triprotic acids would just go three times. So if we look at H3PO4, we transfer one hydrogen over, we get our hydronium, but we still have two hydrogens left. Even though it's an ion, it is going to break down again. So we're going to transfer a hydrogen. We're going to get more hydronium this time, but we still have hydrogen left. So we are going to do it one more time. Again, adding the ion to water. It transfers over our hydrogen. And finally, we are left with an ion that has no more hydrogens. So again, just keep going step by step until you are done and all of your hydrogens have left the ion. So if we look at, or more closely, at these acid-base reactions. Again, we are transferring protons. So we're going to use bronsted lowrys idea. So we're going to have an acid and we're going to react it with a base. What happens is then on the other end you have what we call a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. And that's because most of these reactions aren't just one way. They will come back and go the other way. Remember we're talking about systems in equilibrium. We talked a little bit about that in the last chapter. So if it's going one way, there's a good chance some of these may go back the other way, especially if it's just a bunch of ions dissolved in water. So as we break this down, the acid is going to be the proton donor. The base is going to be the proton acceptor. We're going to determine these from our reactants. So what is going on? How does it start again on the left side of the arrow? Then we get a conjugate base, which is basically what is going to remain after the acid loses a hydrogen. The conjugate acid is what forms when a base accepts a hydrogen. And these are going to be our products. Now you'll notice we call it a conjugate base because it's what remains after it loses a hydrogen, which means it's now able to accept. If it's able to accept, remember a hydrogen acceptor is a base. Our conjugate acid is what forms when the base accepts the hydrogen. That means it has an extra hydrogen, so it is able to donate. And again, a proton donor is an acid. So if we look at it, some examples, we have HF plus H2O gives us F minus and H3O plus. So what donated? HF donated to H2O. So this is my acid. That means H2O must be my base. So F minus then, this is able to accept a hydrogen. So this becomes my conjugate base. This can now donate a hydrogen. So this becomes my conjugate acid. How about something like a diprotic acid? This is still going to donate to H3 or H2O to give H3O. So if you're unsure of who's donating, look at the products. Who ended up with an extra H? Who lost an H? Whoever lost the H is the donor. So this is my acid. Water is my base. And I know we don't often think of water as an acid or a base, but according to the Bronsted-Lowry, if it can accept or donate, it's going to be an acid or a base. So then as we look at this side, well this looks awfully similar to my acid here, so it must be my conjugate base. Remember an acid will always have a conjugate 
of the other form, so the conjugate base. Or you can think of it as it is able to accept one more hydrogen because it's a negative charge here. This is negative. To make it neutral, it would want a positive charge. Where this one is going or will be able to donate, so this would be my conjugate acid. Again, looks awfully similar to my base, and if this is a base, it has to be an acid on the other side. Or this is positive, so to become neutral, it wants to get rid of its positive charge. So it wants to get rid of a hydrogen. So how do the strengths of the conjugates relate? We haven't really talked about strengths of acids or bases, but as you look at conjugates, why don't we call it just an acid? Why is it a conjugate acid? Or why don't we call it just the base? Why is it a conjugate base? Well, strong acids will yield weak conjugate bases. So they're not going to be the same. If it was a strong to begin with, it's not going to be strong to end with. A strong base will yield a weak conjugate acid. So these proton transfer reactions will favor production of weaker acids and bases. So we're basically taking something that was stronger and making it weaker each time we go through a proton transfer. Then we have amphoteric compounds. These are compounds that can act as an acid or a base. So some instances it may accept a hydrogen. In other cases, it's going to be the one that donates the hydrogen. When an amphoteric compound is reacted with an acid, it is going to act as a base. Or vice versa, if it's reacted with a base, it will act as an acid. For example, water, which we know as HOH. So basically, it's made up of an H plus and an OH minus. So if we react water with a known acid, the hydrogen will transfer to the water from the sulfuric acid. So here's my acid, here it's my base. However, in NH3 plus H2O, NH3 is actually going to steal a hydrogen, and this becomes the base and water acts as an acid. So depending on which way, if it's accepting or donating, if it can do either, it's going to be amphoteric.